Hey, Izzy. Why are you staying so late? Don't you have some lit function to be to this evening? <laughs> no. I'm trying to look at these cars from the roadway. I thought the pavement was done once it was all down. Aha. Well, that's when all the lab work starts after it's done out there. Uh, we got to measure the in-place density of this. It tells us a lot about how long that pavement may last. What does this have to do with this core, though? Ah, we are going to measure the GMB of that core. We can compare that back to the mix daily GMM, calculate the in-place density. Oh, the volumetric acronyms. This must be important. It is. Let me show you why. So let's talk about the in-place density and why it's one of the most important characteristics that we can measure during the roadway construction that tells us about the long life of the pavement. Okay. So the in-place density is essentially how tightly we compacted all the particles together. So the tighter we pack them, the less air and the less water they get down in the mix, which then leads to less cracking, less rutting, less stripping, all that bad stuff. So we're talking about pavement life here. Exactly. So back in the day, the Federal Highway Administration and NCAT teamed up and they did a study on increasing the in-place density in mixtures. They called it NCAT Report uh, 1902. Hmm. Not the year. There's a dash in there. But one of the things that they found is that a 1% increase in the in-place density could make the life of the pavement extend 10% or maybe even more. Hmm. 10% just by rolling it better. Yeah, yeah. And there's some other factors as well. But let's think about that. If a road is supposed to last us 20 years and we don't get the density we're supposed to, you know, it only lasts 15 or 12 or less. So how do we measure all of that? Great question. We're going to take this core that we pulled from the roadway. We'll take it back to the bulk lab and submerge it in water bath, measure it in air, and just like you would a compacted specimen from the laboratory, and we'll come up with the GMB. Bulk specific gravity, right? And that's the real world number, how we actually measure. Yes, yes. So that's measure what was actually put on the road. And we can take that GMB value and compare that back to the, the maximum specific gravity or the GMM, a lot of people call it the rice value. Mm -hmm. And that's what we would take a mixture and compact it to have zero air voids, none at all. So the closer we get to GMM, the better? Yeah, to a, to a point. But essentially, that's how we calculate the in-place density. Okay, so how do we do all the math? Oh, great question. Okay, so this is how the math works. All right, that percent density that we're looking for for the in-place density is equal to the GMB divided by the GMM times 100 because it is a percentage. So let's say that uh, you maybe have yourself a GMB that's maybe 2.350, and uh, maybe the GMM is 2.500. Multiply that by 100. What do you get? So 2.350 divided by 2.500 multiplied by 100 equals 94% of the theoretical max. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's pretty good. It is, it is. So a lot of specifications and contracts have a range of, say, 92% to, to 96%. Well, and what about these gauges? I keep seeing them oh, everywhere. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the nuclear density gauge. Wait, where did you have that? Oh, it was just, it was just sitting here. <laughs> Okay, so, well, that's the nuclear density gauge, and it, it uses radiation or, or gamma rays down into the asphalt pavement to measure what the in-place density is. It's a great QC tool. Um, it, it does use some radiation, so there's some paperwork and licensure that needs to be there. You've certainly got to be careful with them, and uh, they always need to be calibrated like anything else. And I've also heard some people talking about using non-nuke Gauges? Yeah, yeah. So the non-nuclear gauges use an electric impulse to measure the in-place density in the asphalt. So without using radiation, they uh, you don't have as much paperwork and licensure involved, and uh, but you still have to calibrate them, right? For sure. Yeah. Do they get used a lot? They do get used a lot. In fact, remember that NCAT study we talked about? Yeah. So 
in that one, some of the states used that non-nuclear gauge and still found that they were getting very consistent results. Have there been any recent or new developments? Oh, yes. I'm glad you asked. So there is a system called a DPS, or a dielectric profiling system. It uses GPR, ground-penetrating radar, to measure the dielectric constant of the material that's, that's out there, and that can be then correlated to the in-place density. Those antennas can be placed on uh, you know, like a baby cart kind of thing or on the bumper of a truck or a van and driven on the road. Gives us nearly 100% coverage of the density measurement on any given project. Beyond that, some roller manufacturers have figured out how to mount that on the bottom of a roller so we can get real-time data to the roller operator on what that in-place density is. Still other manufacturers have worked with ways to measure the impulse to come back up into the roller that they can then try to correlate that to density. That's not really taken off in asphalt very well because it's not great, but there's some new advancements with machine learning that are given that new life, if you will, to come back around. So there's lots of great ways to be measuring the, the in-place density. It's really exciting. So what's actually changing the density out here? Why is it so hard to hit density every time? Well, there's a whole list of things right? So one is the mix type, right? Or the, or the mix design. Some mixes are just harder to compact than others. Uh, then there's always mixed temperature. So you have to be in the compaction temperature range. If you're too cold, you're not going to get density. If you're too hot, sometimes then it pushes around. Uh, you know, lift thickness is really important when it comes to getting density because a thicker lift holds on to that heat longer. You know, speaking of the temperatures there, holds on to that heat longer, which means if we're doing a thin lay or a thin lift paving, that, that the time is much shorter to get density that we need to. Um, sometimes we have tender mixes that split open or push around. Forget about it. You know, the density is going to really be rough there. And then, and then really the base conditions are really important. We need that good foundation underneath our pavement in order to compact against so that we get that good density. So basically everything can mess it up. Yeah, pretty much everything. That's one of the reasons why most specifications have in-place density as a higher pay factor than other factors in the mixture. No pressure, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, but remember that NCAT study we talked about with FHWA? So with that, there were a whole bunch of states that tried different things to change in their process to try to get better in-place density. So there, there was like three quarters of them found that by the little tweaks they made, they increased their in-place density by half a percent on average. And what did they change? Oh, all sorts of things. Like some changed their mix design a little bit, maybe add some more liquid into it. Um, others used the timing of their, of their rollers, changed that up a little bit. Or some of the technology we talked about earlier that can be added to the rollers. Uh, one just added another roller, went to a fourth roller, more, more compactive effort. They got better density. So what happens if we miss density? Oh, great question. So uh, that just basically means we're going to have more air and more water that gets down into the pavement structure. So more air, more water means premature cracking. Maybe we get some rutting or shoving happens. Uh, some stripping could happen and the whole pavement falls apart. And that's expensive. Absolutely. That's why we measure it. That's why it's a higher pay factor. That's why almost all specifications have density in them. Because we want to be able to make sure we provide a smooth, quiet ride for a long time. Well, I'm convinced next time we're paving, I'm watching Density Like a Hawk. That is what I like to hear. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Hope you found something interesting. Don't forget, click that subscribe button down there, probably the like button too, and come back to see more training in your pocket.